So um, I would like to tell you about mixed research. And nowadays, there's so many changes with the softwares, with everything. It's, it's very, very enhanced, very, very um, sophisticated era that you're going to come in. Anyone is doing master by coursework in this class? Yeah, most of you. But anyway, though you're doing master by coursework, you're, you have to do some assignments, right? That assignment, <coughs> you need to have this knowledge too. It's a very powerful one, but you, know where, you don't know where to start with. Likes when you read journal, OK? You've got a lot of journals, you've got a lot of articles, a lot of papers. And you don't know what you do with that paper. You start with the abstract, or you start with the conclusions, and you just click one paper, the abstract, you fell asleep. <laughs> Me too. And you have to read thousands of papers. But there is a software that helps you to do the mapping. You don't have to read one word by one word. What you have here, there's a, call, a message called, or a, um, one of the app, app here, it's called as Voiced uh, Notes uh, Message. If you interview someone and you want to pay attention to what they said or he or she said, just press Voice Notes and it's going to type immediately. And then it's going to tap, 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 tap like that. See? You don't know, right? No. Okay. So this is something that you can do. So data are all available, readily available, secondary data, primary data, which you have accessed, and you don't know how to use it, and you don't know how to analyze it. So that's the reasons why we are here. This is why I call this um, <coughs> enhancing the outcome of data analysis by using mixed method research. Why I said enhancing, that the word enhancing, here. I came from quantitative uh, and, uh, researcher. So what? If you see positive, negative, significant, not significant, so what? No what what? <laughs> what can you tell? It's different. When you do this, combining this with interviews, it will be richer, way more for you to tell. So mixed math research is going to combine the quantitative and qualitative together. Quantitative, qualitative, and mixed method. How do, we, how do we define mixed method research? OK. Apparently, the mixed method research has only 1% contributions. This is an old data. Apartinya. That means if you're doing mixed method, there will be a high chance for you to be accepted. Because all is about empirical evidence, saturated. If you look at the data here, sometimes, a lot of cases, your research questions cannot be answered using regressions model, such as, OK, if you ask about factor-factor apa saja yang mempengaruhi, you can do that with regressions analysis. Tapi mengapa atau bagaimana that cannot be answered using quantitative. So if you want to combine what, apa saja, it's all about what, and why and how, then you need to do mixed method research. Richard, important research questions it can address your research questions better. 
better. Karena tadi ada tambahannya. We have three different paradigm. Qualitative, quantitative, and mixed research. Mixed research is where researchers and methodologists believe qualitative and quantitative were useful as addressing the research questions. Provide most informative, complete, balanced, and useful research results. So, 2004, Olsen used the word triangulations, triangulasi. Triangulation is defined as the mixing of data or method so that to get the diverse viewpoints, campuran, mixed. Data triangulations helps validating mixing methodology. So, hati-hati. Dalam melakukan mixed method research, you can combine it when you collect the data, you can combine it when you analyze the data, yes, you can combine it with the theory, yeah, menyebrang, menyebrang disiplin kita, you can combine it with my background is psychology, psychology and your background is economics, for instance, or kedokteran hewan. We can combine together. That's also called as mixed method. So, yang namanya mix is not only the methodology, but a lot of other things. In what stage? That is in the data collection stage. You understand? So, mixed method research can be done in different stages. Design stage, data collections, <coughs> and analyze, analysis stage. Survey is qualitative in what way? If open-ended questions. So, survey can be done also qualitatively. Don't forget about that. Some researchers say that it's a blended research, integrative research, multiple methods, triangulated study, ethnography, mix lot of different terms, but they're all just the same. So it's a long, long, long concept that a lot of researchers have done. Nowadays, it becomes more popular with the inclusions of software. We have three types of software that, it, that are very, very powerful. The first one called as NV411. You just put, upload everything you have in NV411 and then tell what you, what you want to have. In a second, it's going to read and mapping, memetakan jurnal yang kita baca. The second one is Leximanser. The third one is even more powerful. It's called diction. Diction's analyzed based on linguistic. Jadi kalau ada surat yang dikirim, a letter, to whatever, ada report yang ditulis oleh CEO. You know what? As long as they have more than 500 words, you put the data in a second, we tell you lying 25%, aggressive 15%, inconsistent <coughs> uncertainty plus 25 variables. Powerful, yeah? And you need to know about this development. Otherwise, you just run positive, <coughs> negative, okay? Regression, significant, not significant, and so on and so on. So, this is what I'm going to tell you a little bit more. This is the one. Four types, four types of triangulations. Data, investigator, theory, and methodological. That's the method. The last one is the method. Quantitative, qualitative, qualitative, quantitative. Okay. Then Sid mengatakan the two types of triangulations. Di dalam satu method sendiri, within one paradigm, or between the paradigm, I give you an example. I like to take pictures. So we went one day to see an auction, lelang, ikan tuna. Foto kita ada sekitar tiga ribuan foto. Banyak banget fotonya. 
Oke? Okay? Foto itu adalah jadi jatah penelitian kita. It tells a lot of information. Kualitatif apa kuantitatif? Kualitatif. Pictures. Visual ethnography namanya. Setiap pictures ada narasinya. Setiap pictures ada narasinya. Entah kita yang menarasikan atau kita pakai informan. Informan itu fotonya kita liatin sama orang yang lebih ngerti. Pak, Pak, ngapain sini, Pak? Ya. Yeah. You know, when I took a picture, I always saw that ibu-ibu in every picture I have. You have. She must be very, very important person. That one called middleman. Tengkulak. If I don't come, if I don't see pictures, I will never ever put tengkulak as one of my variable. Because in all literatures, the role of middleman was ignored. Gak pernah ada yang membicarakan. Tapi, begitu I took a picture, then I realized. So, what happened? We took a picture, we have some data. Okay? Then we interview people. This is what we call it within methods. Atau multiple quantitative or <coughs> multiple qualitative approach. So if you do the research, you have to state this. That I'm doing mixed method research by doing within. Sementara yang satunya, between, antara <coughs> survey dan interview. Math paradigmanya berbeda. You can do it simultaneously. You can do it sequentially. What does it mean by simultaneously? Interview dan survei barengan. Sequentials, when the results are approach one after the other. Satu dilakukan, baru dilakukan yang lain. Then, my students in class ask me, what should I do first? Quantitative atau qualitative? Qual atau quantitative? That's up to your research problems. This is a very, very powerful table. This is in my paper. It's going to come in Journal of Mixed Method Research. <coughs> And it comes from this. I adopt from this. The typology said that, You can run it concurrently, simultaneously, or sequentially, one after the other. So, for instance, I'm conducting interview and survey at the same time. And they do not complement each other. As they complement each other, that I have to do it at the same time. That has to be here, right? One and qual at the same time. Survey and interview. Yeah? But if you do it like this, sequential, so this is concurrent barengan, yeah? Kalau you do it here, the qual will never happen until you do the qual first. Qual dulu, kemudian qualnya dilengkapin. Contoh. You want to, that's the first one there, okay? You want to develop questionnaire. Tapi bingung mau nanya apa ya di questionnaire-nya ya. Okay? You don't know what to ask. So you need to interview people, selected people. Pak, Pak, kalau aku mau bikin penelitian ini, kira-kira Pak apa aja sih, Pak? No, you're going to talk. Okay. You make uh, the data based on interview as for your data for your survey. Richard, but you have to be very careful when you said like that. Mixed research can be done in the early stage, data collections and data analysis. So if you do it data collections, yes, quantitative and qualitative, you have to state which one is the dominant one. Analysis, you can only do it once, qualitative or quantitative. That's not a problem. So it's not that mixed in data collections, mixed in analysis, no. Okay, you can do only one in analysis. This is what the stage are, research designs, collections, data analysis. 
is a size quantitative data can assist qualitative component identifying representative samples members. Design stage, data collection stage. So the first is design stage, data collections. Quantitative data can play a role in providing baseline information and helping to avoid elite bias. Talking to high status individuals, what happened? <coughs> Qualitative data can help in facilitating data collections process. Data analysis. Quantitative data can facilitate the assessments of the qualitative data. Salah satunya adalah when you put this in regressions. Regressions is data analysis. And this is something that you can read, but in conclusions, mixed method give a richer, comprehensive, more comprehensive, more meaningful answering or addressing research questions way more rather than just conducting one paradigm. Ada satu lain yang nanti saya pasang, namanya discourse analysis. Discourse in, is when there are two people talking, but not between interviewer and interviewee, but between interviewer and interviewer. Ini berdua nih ngomong nih, diskusi. Terus saya jadi pengamat. Dengerin tuh ngomong tuh, ngoceng gitu. See the difference with interview uh, discourse? Yang satu ngomong ini, timbalin. Ngomong ini, timbalin. So you like building a house. That is a very, very powerful one to, to get the data. Qualitative can be analyzed using content analysis, thematic, grounded theory, discourse, tadi yang saya jelasin, and yang terakhir adalah constant comparative analysis. Okay. The three softwares that I've mentioned can analyze content, discourse, grounded, thematic, and constant. It will be more powerful and full to analyze constant rather than the other two. Sebelumnya, saya mesti jelasin dulu tentang jenis-jenis data, primary and secondary. Um, data pada dasarnya dibedakan antara primary dan secondary. Yang namanya interview itu nggak harus primary data loh. Kalau saya dengerin Kik Andi atau Mata Najwa lagi interview, ada informasi yang berguna saya catat. Itu secondary data, betul nggak? Yang membedakan primary and secondary is public access apa enggak. If it is public access, it's called as secondary data. If everyone can get it, that means secondary data. Kalau only you, because you have connections, or because your supervisors, things like that, that is a primary data. Content analysis. Yang dianalisa adalah isi, apapun isinya. In content analysis, you have two types. Quantitative content and qualitative content. If you get qualitative content, namanya thematic analysis. Jadi yang dinilai, yang kita analisa adalah kata-kata mutiara, tulisan. Content, kalau kuantitatif, berapa kali, siapa saja yang ngomong, itu kita bilang kuantitatif. Okay. Tapi kalau sudah ngomong temanya, tim, and we talk about thematic, kuantitatif, eh, content, kualitatif, itu namanya thematic analysis. Kalau konstan komparatif, membandingkan mahasiswa ngomong apa, Dosen ngomong apa? Interview satu, interview dua. Bedanya apa? Eselon satu sama eselon lima belas. Bedanya apa? Oke? Okay. Bandingkan. Ada persamaan, ada konsistensi, ada anything. Five steps. Comparing between single data, interviews, Interview from different groups, pairs, discourse, couples, discourse, 
combining between interviews, FKD, websites, pictures, and videos. Very, very powerful. Okay. Bisa ngambil data dari web, PDF, your journal, suara, survey, interview, literature review, emails. Ini contohnya. Ini website ya. Ini detik.com. Oh bukan dari Kompas. Dari Kompas nih. Ini HTML. Surat kabar apa saja. Berita apa saja di website. Itu kan versinya kan HTML ya. Sama NVivo, websites langsung di copy and capture, pindah langsung jadi PDF. That's really cool. Apalagi, nah ini salah satu outputnya. Ini namanya Word Cloud. Output dari NVivo, Content Analysis. Kalau hurufnya besar seperti ini, tandanya... Ini yang paling sering di refer, omongan yang paling sering dibicarakan. Services, bu, tapi aku nggak mau city, bu, nggak ada artinya. Di mouse kita masukin ke city, right click, stop. Aku nggak mau lihat kata-kata city. City nggak ada lagi diolah, oke? Okay? Ini mind map, data dimasukin atau jurnal dimasukin, paper dimasukin, keluar nih mind mapnya kayak gini. In a second, bisa di stop juga mana yang nggak suka. <coughs> Ini Lexi Manser. <coughs> kelihatannya kelihatannya susah tapi nggak. Bedanya Lexi Manser dan Envivo, codingnya dia yang bikin, bukan saya yang bikin. Kalau Envivo, codingnya saya yang bikin. Ini namanya konsep. Yang besar-besar ini konsep. Tim. Otomatis dibuat. Sama Lexi Manser. Selain itu, dia juga menghasilkan angka-angka. Berapa kali dia ngomong tentang chairman, berapa kali dia ngomong ini. Ada angkanya. Kalau saya klik, muncul ini. Konteksnya dalam konteks apa. Ini saya bisa run dalam bentuk regresi. Ketiga namanya diction. Ini yang tadi tuh, agresif, uncertain. Gimana sih kok bisa ngelihat orang itu ngomongnya banyak uncertain-nya sama agresif? Uncertain itu kalau dia banyak ngomong, maybe, no, no, insya Allah, insya Allah, something different. <coughs> maybe, or could be, you know, it's like perhaps that to mix uh, Informations is not certain. Summary. How about if the results is conflicting? Assume all is correct. Data screening has been done properly. Visit again the theory and the research questions. How about previous studies? Could we conclude mixed results inconclusive? How could we justify it? Jadi bisa jadi itu inkonklusif. Tapi kita harus liatin dulu loh. Asumsinya, measurementnya, atributnya, research questions, research problem have been conducted properly. Oke? Okay? 